Hello everybody! Today I am going to be doing the top 10 best movie and TV shows of 2017. You're gonna get my bookshelf so you're getting the Harry Potter, Clockwork, Lady Midnight stuff. I have seen so many TV shows, not a whole lot of movies for some reason though. Oh well. So I'm gonna be doing this, for, I'm gonna be starting off with 10 and working my way up to one. There were many movies and TV shows I did see that didn't make it onto this list. It doesn't necessarily mean I liked them less, they just weren't my top 10. Number 10. Season 1 only had four episodes and it was on Netflix. It came out, I believe, if I remember, like, I think sometime in the summer. And if I remember correctly, season 2 is maybe supposed to have 8 or 10 episodes. I'm not sure, but I'll look at that. For number 10, it's Castlevania. So Castlevania, if you don't know, is a game series that has, I'll put the date up, like, summer here of when it actually came out the year. I, I never played any of the games. Games, but I knew of Castlevania. I've heard of it. I've only seen a couple gameplays. I never played it myself, like I said, but I was interested in it. I watched all four episodes. It was easy to watch them. It was like binge watching those four episodes. And I liked how it was actually a cartoon. That was something that was definitely different than your typical live action, things like that. I did like how it was anime style. <laughs> Number nine. This one, if I just say the author's name, I think a lot of you are kind of going to be like, oh, it's that show. Now, this is the only reason that these are on the bottom is because they're season one. It was definitely a starter season. I feel like the other seasons are definitely going to up this that I feel like this will probably be higher on my list next year. I'm sure of it. Basically, it's American Gods. Yeah, it's number nine on my list, but you know what? Like I said, it was definitely, it was a starter season. I wasn't too into it yet, but I enjoyed it. It was very well done. Everybody did very well in acting wise. The scenery was amazing. The cinematography was fantastic. The graphics, I appreciated very much the way they showed that show, how they did the scenes and everything and how they portrayed the characters. I loved it. It's just, it definitely was a first season and I definitely feel like it's definitely going to get better because I could see through the episodes it got better with each episode. Now watching it, I will definitely read American Gods and if you didn't already guess, it's Neil Gaiman who wrote it. I mean, come on, who doesn't, who doesn't know that? It's Neil Gaiman. I mean, come on. This one's interesting because this has actually been out for about five seasons or and this is, I give it away to some of you. Volume five, see if anybody gets that. Um, It's, it's an anime-ish. So number eight is Ruby volume five. If anybody knows Ruby, I don't need to go too much into it. It's the world of Remnant. There are hunters who fight these creatures called Rim, which are essentially, they drive on hate and fear. And these hunters have these special weapons that can kill them. And then these hunters also have special abilities. There's things called Dust. It's by Rooster Teeth, which is on YouTube. I've been enjoying Ruby quite a bit. I didn't know about it when it first came out. So I think it was like two, three seasons in. Oh no, it, yeah, three seasons were already out. I didn't know about it. And I watched someone's reaction. And I was like, what is this? This is kind of interesting. And then I saw like all of it. And then I went on there. I went under Rooster Teeth. And I love this show. The reason it's number eight is because there's other stuff that kind of precedes it. <laughs> All right, so number seven, this is really a only one season standalone sort of sequel to another show. You all saw me do a review on it. I have those up. It's The White Princess. It is, like I said, if you've seen my reviews on those eight episodes, you know how I felt about them. I don't have to go too much into it. Just go watch those videos and you'll see how I felt about them. <laughs> So we're, start we're starting to get higher up on my list here. Number six, th this is a movie. It takes place in 1940s. So by saying that, some of you maybe are kind of thinking a few movies, I'm sure. A couple, because when I say 40s, what happened in the 1940s? World War II. So it's like, there's only a couple World War II movies out right now. But this one I saw with my family and we all enjoyed it very, very much. Hello, Cleo. So this is Darkest Hour with Gary Oldman as Churchill. His transformation, it is incredible because I swear, 
he looks pretty close, his makeup to Churchill. It's interesting. His demeanor is also pretty close as well. The actors were really just like spot on with their characters and their acting skills for damn sure. I swear to you, if I remember correctly, I saw somewhere like Gary Oldman's like up for a nomination of a Golden Globe nomination for best actor for this film. Like it's just so good. <laughs> Number five. So now we're getting into the top five here. This is also another movie. This movie is also a historical movie as well, but this one actually takes place in the 70s. And I'm sure some of you are probably thinking, oh, that got a limited release before it comes out in January 2018 to the public. I recommend if you have not seen this, go see this film because the film is The Post with Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks. Oh, it was so good. To be fair, for five and six, I can actually interchange both The Darkest Hour and The Post because they were both equal grounds with each other when it came to the acting, the music, the plot, the development, the cinematography, everything was just so good with these. The Post itself has like six Golden Globe nominations alone by itself. It's that good. If you don't know what The Post is, The Washington Post revealing the Pentagon Papers. I won't go too much of it. You can go look up the history yourself because it's out. There's really no spoilers to this because it's history. It happened in the 70s. That whole story is out. You can go look it up. I love Loved it. It was so good. Number four. This one, I could actually show one of the books because I actually have the book for this. You know what? I'm not gonna gloss over because I actually talked about this, to be honest. And it's it's Outlander season three. I mean, I can it's based off of Voyager. I mean <laughs> <laughs> like I can I can basically show off this book. It was good that season. It was really good. There were there were some episodes like in the beginning that were a little slow for me, but I pushed through because I was like, I know it's gonna be good. It's gonna be slow at first. And it was. The rest of the episodes were fantastic. I loved it. So two two and three, episodes two and three, I think I like the least, but the rest of the season was just so good that it was like I can't really bash it just because two episodes just because I didn't like two episodes. Each season definitely got better because I think the actors were definitely getting more into their characters. We're in top three of my best movies and TV shows. So this one, this one I kind of almost forgot because here's the thing. And this, this is a hint. If you don't know, it's on PBS. And the thing is in the UK, they get it a year early. So when I looked this up, I thought it was last year. No, last year in the UK, this year in the US, <laughs> Victoria. It's basically about Queen Victoria and her reign. I only knew very little about Queen Victoria. I did not know a whole lot about her. And then I saw the trailer for the show. And I was like, you know what? This looks interesting. I, there's a reason it's number three on my list because holy shit, for a first season? Damn, that was fantastic. That was amazing. Like usually for a first season, it's always like a testing water thing where they're kind of just like, oh, we're going to test the waters. But this one, it was like, nope, boom. They start off like right away, right up front. Fantastic performance. I could not believe that shit. It was so good. I definitely recommend watching Victoria. Season two is coming coming out on UK. It's already come out. So if I have any UK viewers, you've seen season two, you lucky sons of bitches. You were so lucky for us, the US, we're going to be getting it January next year. So look forward to that. For two, this one is based off of a book. Unfortunately, the book hasn't come out yet. And I think that's a sign for everybody of what it is. It's essentially, without glossing it, it's, ga it's Game of Thrones season seven. I thought it was fantastic. And I know many others did too. There were so many good episodes. The actors did a fantastic job. You know what? George R. R. Martin told them what was going to happen to all the characters. He told them the plot. He told them what was going to occur later on after book five. So you know what? The producers know what they're doing. And they got screwed when HBO was like, oh, hey, guess what? We all are, we're only giving you 13 episodes. Have fun. Uh, yeah, you're too expensive now because of your CGI dragons. How dare you deprive all of us of our Game of Thrones. I know a bunch of my friends who rewatched everything from season one all the way up to season seven, rewatched everything. And they said like, if you do that, it actually fit really well into the rest of the 60 episodes. I have to agree because I did do that. And I was like, oh yeah, it works. It's definitely better. So I recommend that. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we have reached number one of my favorite TV show. And the thing is, these episodes are like an hour to like an hour and a half long. So it's like, you could say like, oh, these are kind of like movies because of how long they are. This is on Netflix and you can, you can binge watch this. It's amazing. Oh my God. I should have done a video of this last year for season one because holy shit, it's The Crown season two. It is my number one favorite. If you don't know what The Crown is, you follow Queen Elizabeth through her reign. So season one and season two have the same actress. Season three is going to have a different actress playing an, a little bit older Elizabeth. Each season is supposedly supposed to have another actress playing an older Elizabeth. So it's following through her reign. You definitely, she became queen when she had her kids, how her marriage went, her reign over the country, over all the different stuff that's happening, all the different prime ministers she goes through, all the different presidents she meets, all the diplomatic things she's doing, flipping fantastic season. Holy shit, it was so good. The actress who is playing Elizabeth right now in these two seasons, oh, she's good. <laughs> She is really good at playing this. Oh my God, I can't get over that. It's so good that season. I can't wait for the other seasons. And it's on Netflix. You can binge watch season one. You can binge watch season two right now. Go watch them. I highly recommend it because it's my number one favorite, best movie, best TV show of 2017. That's it. That is actually all of my best movies slash TV shows of 2017 with The Crown being number one. So good. Recommend all of these to go watch them. I recommend the movie. Movies, go and watch them. I will. I have a book one. I have my best books of 2017. I won't have a video for my favorite games of 2017 because I didn't really play a whole lot of games that came out this year or any new ones, which is a bummer. But you know, that doesn't mean there was a lot of games that I didn't want to play. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be some games that came out this year that will make it into next year's list. Who knows? Look forward to anticipated movies and TV shows of 2018. But that is it for this video. I will see you all in the next one.